Hi, folks. Welcome to the Church of Grace and Peace here online as we have uh, one of our sermons today to bless you. Some are watching on a Saturday, a Sunday, anytime online. Well, it's really blessed to have you here. I'm Pastor Ralph Frieda, uh, the Senior Associate Pastor here at the Church of Grace and Peace, and I am just so blessed to bring the message today. So first of all, how about if we pray for all those fine folks out there, they're giving online, they're mailing in their giving, and uh, we just appreciate you so deeply because obviously if you're giving, you're putting the kingdom of God first in your life, and it's a priority. So we want to honor you with that way, and of course, join in faith together for this. Let's just pray here. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the giving of the believers, Father, as they promote the kingdom of God, that, Father God, your blessing would be upon them, Lord God, that they would have an abundance in their lives for every good work in the kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for their faithful giving. We thank you, Father God, that they put this as a priority for their lives. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name, for your blessing upon them and this offering. Amen. Now, I would like to pray for our sermon today. Uh, Father God, we just invite Holy Spirit today to speak through me, to speak through the hearing of those that would be receiving this message, Father, that, Lord God, truly they would leave uh, from this time greater than when they first began. That, Father God, truly good things would be deposited in them, Father, that will teach them in the days ahead as they walk with you. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise the Lord today. It's so good to be with you. We're in a new series as we begin here on Sundays, uh, a new series on a topic called Thinking Like a Christian. Uh, so I have the honor of doing the first two sermons in this new series so what does it uh, mean when we say thinking like a Christian? What does that mean? Uh, well, I'm going to answer it at the end, not now. What does that mean? Uh, but when we look at a topic such as this, uh, we need to be looking at also something called a biblical worldview. Um, so I want to start by an introduction of what is called worldview. What is a worldview? Um, how do I view the world around me? Uh, and that's important to consider. It's first by how I think. And then the ideas that come as a conclusion of what I'm thinking. Uh, ideas, however, have consequences. So what we think is very important because we'll have the consequences in our lives that come from our thinking. Uh, did you know that we make decisions all day long and act upon a worldview that we already have? And yet, most people cannot really articulate what their worldview is. Uh, yet, we have it. Uh, many don't even realize they have a worldview. Now, you have a handout. I don't have it with me at the moment, but you have a handout uh, that you can get that's online. You can uh, download it. Uh, and on the first page of that handout is, uh, says so many topics. And all these different topics, abortion, uh, voting, uh, family, uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of topics. Each of these topics, you have a worldview on. There's something you think about this. There's a worldview associated with these, all these amazing topics that are on this line. Uh, so when we look at these topics, uh, we have an opinion on all of them that's been developed. Some a very long opinion, some a very short opinion. But we do have an opinion somewhere. And all those little opinions that we formed on all these topics of life that are part of us, or part of our thinking, part of our presentation that is given to us in life, we have a worldview on that. Uh, now, if you have your fill-in-the-blank hand out there, which you can also download online, that's your first fill-in-the-blank. And it tells us a worldview is the way we view our world and our place in it. So your fill in there is worldview. A worldview is the way we view our world and our place in it. Um, I've said this many times. It's worth repeating here. I wear glasses. My eyes do not see light like someone who does not have glasses. It comes through a filter first and then hits my eyes. Uh, it's filtered. The light is filtered before it hits me, before I see it. Our worldview is a lens. It's a filter by which we see life by, how I see life by. Um, so a worldview is the way that we're viewing and interpreting the whole world around us. 
and how I should behave in it. How do I relate to this world around me? Whether you're a believer or not, how do I relate to this world around me? That's an important question. On your second fill in the blank here, it says, my, by my worldview, it is how I approach life. So worldview is a fill-in, approach life is a fill-in. By my worldview, it is how I approach life. Isn't that an amazing thought? Uh, worldviews can be very personal. Uh, different people could see things very differently by their worldview due to the influences they had growing up, due to the unique events they've had in their life growing up. And that's not necessarily wrong. It has just shaped your worldview. As long as it's not opposed to what the Word of God teaches us. Now this becomes real serious because our topic is thinking like a Christian. Um, so what makes up a worldview? I have some slides here for you to look at, and I have a copy of them here, what they say, because I can't see the slides. Uh, the first slide uh, is just a bunch of uh, topics. Theology, sociology, philosophy, law, history, politics, ethics, psychology, biology, economics. This slide um, are components of a world view. In fact, the flip side of your handout that you have that says so many topics, it tells you just these. What are the topics necessary to have a worldview? How I view all these topics makes up the worldview of my life. So um, communists would have a certain view of this. Uh, those who believe in democracy will have a certain view of this. Socialists will have a certain view of this. Um, those who do and do not believe in God have a certain view of this. Isn't that amazing? So uh, we should be asking ourselves the question, uh, what does the Bible give us as a blueprint to help understand all these issues that make up a worldview? Let's go to our second slide here. I just have it as a quote because uh, it's easier to look at. This is a quote from Francis Schaeffer, a famous theologian. He's gone home to be with the Lord. Uh, he wrote a very famous book called A Christian Manifesto. And um, regarding worldview, uh, Francis Schaeffer said, the basic problem of Christians in this country in the last 80 years or so, how about that? Uh, in regard to society and in regard to government is that they have seen things in bits and pieces instead of totals. Uh, let's take a closer look at this. Bits and pieces instead of totals. Let's take a look at a, another slide coming up next. Well, I guess you all know what that looks like. If it's drawn correctly, it should look like a jigsaw puzzle. And um, as you see here, of course, in a jigsaw puzzle, all the pieces are to fit together. Uh, so let's look at the next slide here, number four. And we see here, that the pieces of the worldview that we have just looked at are like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. And they should fit together. That's what uh, Schaefer was talking about, that we shouldn't see things in bits and pieces, history by itself, philosophy by itself, biology by itself, but rather they all fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. Because each of these pieces contribute to how I see the big picture, the worldview of life. Unfortunately, if we do, if we um, only see things in disjointed pieces, only biology by itself, only law by itself, we fail to see that they're connected and we don't see a big picture. We need to. We need to see a big picture. Uh, the important fact here is that we can't separate these pieces. And that was Schaefer's point. People seem to want to separate them all today as if they're unrelated, but they are related. We need them to get together, to fit together, to see the big picture here, uh, the Francis quote. Uh, so uh, Christians here are failing to see that our faith in Christ and the word of God is the connection that makes all these pieces fit together. They're all connected in Jesus. Let me tell you a quick story. Uh, we'll pause for a second on physics. Uh, you're made up of atoms and molecules. This podium here is made up of atoms and molecules. We're told in physics, when these atoms move real slow, they're harder. When these atoms are a little bit more free moving and faster moving, they're gases, right? But they're all made of atoms, all made of molecules. And what holds them all together? I mean, we're told if the earth stops spinning, 
we would all fly out in the outer space because there's no gravity. But gravity doesn't hold atoms and molecules together. Why is that? Because the point is they can't tell you why they're held together. And their answer is in the scriptures. Colossians chapter 1, verse 17, where Paul says, in him, all things are held together. The very physical universe we have is held together by the Lord Jesus Christ. And in a worldview, all these uh, things that we've looked at that are different topics should all be held together in Christ. That he's the center of the conclusions we all come to. Uh, we all do puzzles, right? You did them as a child. A lot of people do them as adults. Um, I like to do puzzles sometimes. Uh, sometimes people frame their puzzles. They're so proud of them. Uh, but when you look at all these pieces of a puzzle on a table, you can't figure out what you're seeing. What do you do? You go to the picture on the box. And the picture on the box you're looking at will tell you the model by which these pieces all fit together. And like a worldview, when all these pieces are fit together, they will always resemble a picture of what Jesus wants us to know. It says in John chapter 14, verse 9, we're not going to show you the scripture, where Jesus says, he who has seen me has seen the Father. When we have seen Jesus, it all points to him into eternity. All should be a picture of him. Everything in life that we would view as a worldview, we should get from his picture to us. So you're filling the blank here, number three. It's a long one. We need to learn to think like Jesus, to think like, to, um, to, to think like how the Father God intended us to think as his word reveals it to us. We'll say that again. We need to learn to think like Jesus, to think like how Father God intended us to think as his word reveals it to us. You know, the word of God reveals us the will of the Father. You know, you often hear people say, that's a mystery, nobody's going to know God. Hey, he's revealed himself to us in his word. More importantly, he revealed himself in Jesus when Jesus said that he and the Father are one. And um, that's a picture that's given to us inside of us. But as we look at this a little closer, uh, we find here it's the evil one who has a plan to pollute and darken my worldview by lies and deceptions that we would accept the lie as truth. If you didn't know that, that was a big deal with Nazi Germany. Goebbels and Hitler, they presented a lie as truth. And Hitler had said, or it was Goebbels, I don't remember which, if you tell a lie enough, people will believe it. The bigger the lie, the easier it is to believe. Wow. That's definitely from the mind of hell. So let's look at this a little closer here. Um, there's a battle in the heavenlies, in the unseen spirit realm, over nations, over states, over counties, over towns, over the minds of how people think. There's a battle taking place, especially since the latter 1800s, a battle taking place. And today we only see this in the natural, this battlefield. We only see the results of it the war that has already taken place in the spirit realm. We're seeing the battlefield results. Number four here on your fill in the blank. There is a spiritual war over our minds and how we think. Well, that's a real important statement. There's a spiritual war over our minds and how we think. Uh, in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, A, A meaning the first part of the verse, King James Bible, for as he thinketh in his heart, so he is. Thinketh is Elizabethan English. It means resulting in. As we think in our hearts, so we are. So, how, how do we think? As we think, so we act. You're not going to act separate from your thinking. Otherwise, you'd have no brainwave. You're going to act and then you're going to act as you would think. So you can only act out in prayer what you believe. So what do you think? Uh, the devil's been warring against our minds to darken our minds so that we don't think like Christians. So we talk on the topic here of thinking like a Christian. Uh, we have a war that we wouldn't. Now let's consider briefly the situation. We could spend a lot of time on this. By, by the way, just the topic of worldview. I do a 10-hour course on this. 
I don't have anywhere near 10 hours. This is a really complicated topic. But consider the situation, television. It's become a cesspool of violence over the years, uh, sexual sin, a collection of portraits of uh, dumb parents and smart kids who have all the answers, uh, teachings on the occult, humiliation of anyone who's a believer. Um, in America, we have been miserably losing the battle here since World War II. Every area of our society has been affected by this warfare. Uh, the schools have uh, turned out against God. There is no prayer allowed, yet homosexuality is welcomed among the students and the staff. Uh, our American history classes are being rewritten where early American heroes are being vilified. If a child goes to public school today from kindergarten through high school, he will graduate a socialist and think like one, and he doesn't even know it. Wow. Strong statement. Mass media today, there is no God. Man is God. Live out your carnal passions. Live for today. The government, for many, many years, has been trying to control the masses. Uh, there's been a move towards one world government in our country that America would answer to the United Nations, uh, make America's, uh, the UN's policeman to the world. Um, entertainment appeals to many carnal desires, destroying Christian heritage, promoting paganism and spiritism. And too much of what is called the Lord's church today in America thinks and acts like the world. Wow. So in the light of all this, how we think is how we act. And then the question is, do we think biblically? That is the really big question today. Do we think biblically? Uh, most in America who claim that they're Christians don't think biblically. If you're a Christian, there are elements we should all share and have in common that don't change, even if society changes. And biblical thinking is at the top of that list. Did you realize if you were an adult prior to World War II, and I'm sure no one listening has been, if you were an adult prior to World War II, you were normal. People today uh, don't, don't have a normalcy. Before World War II, if you were an adult, people thought biblically whether they were saved or not. Isn't that wild? If you intentionally chose to sin, you knew you were wrong. But today, people do not think biblically, including many who are in the church across America. Many choose uh, lifestyles of sin, and they don't think they're doing anything wrong. They justify their own sin in their eyes. So what's happened here to change the thinking that was so different prior to World War II? Well, biblically speaking, there's a lot we could say, but biblically speaking, it's called doctrines of demons. The Word of God says that. And doctrines of demons have darkened our society. So we're in a spiritual battle here of worldviews. It's not an intellectual battle all alone. It is a spiritual battle that has attacked the mind because behavior comes from those premeditated thoughts. And the thoughts of Americans, it's so sad, have become very polluted and muddled. Paul, in the Word of God, has warned us in advance to be aware of different worldviews other than the scriptures. He doesn't use the word worldview, but consider in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, this is out of the King James Bible, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit and after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. I'll tell you a quick story here. When I was in college, that was my second or first year in college. I took a course in philosophy. And guess what? The philosophy book, the textbook, it's a secular school, in its introduction, quoted this scripture to make fun of the Apostle Paul. How about that? And oddly enough, the, uh, well, not oddly enough, the uh, professor was an atheist. But how about this? God has the last word. On his deathbed, his daughter had received the Lord and she led him to Christ. How about that? God gets the last word. So that's the King James. Let's look at this from the New American Standard. See to it that there, no one takes you captive through philosophy and the empty deceptions in accordance with human tradition, in accordance with the elementary principles of the world, rather than in accordance with Christ. So there are false worldviews out there, philosophies of men that will draw you away from a simple and pure devotion to Christ. And doesn't that what the Word of God calls us to a simple and pure devotion to Christ. So we fight spiritually 
a war against those demons in the heavenlies. And we take, uh, who have taken captive over our society. Uh, first, we recognize the problem exists. And then second, we need to pray and forbid this to exist with the apostolic and prophetic authority the Lord's church has. Paul also tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, another very important scripture, we are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. We are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. This is a call to us. We must do this because we're in a battle over worldviews for our souls. The believer knows the God of the universe as Father God. Uh, Father God has revealed himself through his word. He has revealed himself through Jesus and that we can live by Holy Spirit to know him. That is the worldview we need to embrace. Our last fill in the blank here is we as believers are meant to have a biblical Christian worldview. And then the line after that says, that is the beginning of thinking like a Christian. So as we start to close here, um, I said I'd answer the question that I originally started with. What does it mean to think like a Christian? What does thinking like a Christian mean? Well, it has to do with worldviews. To think like a Christian means that we get our worldview from the Word of God, my lens. It's the uh, how I view my world is through the lens of the Word of God. I then test all that's in the world around me through that lens. I have the Word of God shape how I think and how I live my life by the choices I make from day to day and by the plan Father God has for my life. I said a lot there. Wow. Because next week, as we continue this in uh, part two of this series, we'll talk about how we do that to think as Christians. How do I let the word of God be that lens and guide by which I see all by? Um, that is thinking like a Christian that I'm going to let intentionally the word of God be my lens by which I see everything through and test everything by. Not by the philosophies of men, not by the teachings of the society around me, which change from decade to decade, not by socialists who have 50-year plans to take over our country, not the nonsense like that. Uh, one particular scholar said the socialists took over the colleges in the 1920s. And their students who became the professors of the 1950s and 60s are the ones that brought much harm and continue to do to our society by generation of professors now that come from socialists. Wow. In the 1960s and the early 60s, we kicked God out of our schools. That's the beginning of America no longer becoming a Christian nation. We are in a battle here of worldviews. How about your children? How about your grandchildren? It's a battle. We don't want to let their generations be taken captive. So let us learn to think as a Christian through the word of God, which we'll talk about next week, and realize that I want to live with a biblical Christian worldview. I hope you do too. Thank you for listening.